This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Omnia Saleh and Henny Balkis. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Future Talk right here on Pulse 95. It is me, Hani Balqis, with Omnia Saleh, bringing you everything you need to know about what's happening in the tech world and in the UAE and in outer space. And we're going to be talking about the great conjunction where Jupiter and Saturn align together, something that hasn't happened in hundreds and hundreds of years. We're going to give you all the details that happened last night, December 21st, and how the UAE did set their sights on that conjunction. We're also going to be talking about how Twitter is publicly declaring Joe Biden the winner of the U.S. election on who others tweets than Trump's own tweets. We're also going to be talking about a massive fraud operation that stole millions and millions of dollars from online bank accounts. We're going to tell you how to keep yourself safe from those type of frauds. And for our apps of the day, we're going to be talking about the award for the kids' best game on Android for 2020. Now, you guys know that I'm not a big Android fan, but I'm going to give you the best game on Android devices. We're also going to be talking about a new version of Microsoft Office but there won't be a subscription and it will be launched in 2021. Now, we do know that for Microsoft Office, you do have to pay a one-time fee, if I do believe, or use the subscription. But now Microsoft Office is cutting that out. Lots to talk about right here on Future Talk. So keep Pulse95 locked because we'll be right back. Daily Digital News. Bits and bytes connect our world. Ladies and gentlemen, stargazers in the UAE were in for a year-end treat yesterday evening as they did look up to the sky to see a rare celestial event that happened after hundreds of years, which they do call the Great Conjunction. Now, it is estimated that it has been, I think, 800 years since the two planets became so close to each other. Now, December 21st is the night of the winter solstice, and two of the largest planets in our solar system were seen emerging in the UAE sky, wowing every beholder. Now, I do I do bet you guys did see a lot of pictures on Instagram about these two plants. I personally did look out the sky and I didn't see uh, the two plants emerge until around, I believe, 7.30ish. It was estimated from 5.30 all the way to 10. But I did uh, use a couple of streams on YouTube to see how close they were getting and it was super close. Some people got some high definition pictures using a telescope and I do recommend you guys go on Instagram or Twitter to check out those pictures. Now, a lot of Bollywood stars, believe it or not, were uh, witnessing this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, experiments, experience. And uh, a lot of people were, in the beginning, they didn't know what was really happening. Some people were scared. Some people were not. And uh, I, do, I do believe, in my opinion, that this won't happen again because we did bring uh, someone from the Sharjah Astronom Astronomy Group, uh, I think it was last week, to talk about this great conjunction. And it was something really out of a sci-fi movie but uh there's some fun facts about this now some christians think that uh a special thing was born at the time of a solar conjunction therefore it is often called the christmas star and similar muslims do think that our prophet was born when a similar kind of situation did happen so it's basically two bright celestial objects creating one a very bright uh, object. Now, I want to ask you guys, 4215, or on our Instagram, at Pulse95Radio, please do message us in. If you've seen the Great Conjunction or whether or not you did kind of uh, experience it. Now, this kind of spectacle made Jupiter and Saturn appear as one bright star, for those who don't know. And it wasn't through the night sky and through the event was visible to the naked eye. But those with a telescope did enjoy a better view. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a telescope, but I do wish I had one to watch it up close and personal. But let's go all the way to Twitter. Talk about how Twitter is publicly declaring Joe Biden, President like Joe Biden, the winner of the U.S. election. And they're declaring that on Donald Trump's own tweets, who is the current U.S. president. Now, you might have noticed a brand new Twitter label on Trump's latest wildly misleading tweet. Now, the tweet, the label does read, election officials have certified Joe Biden as the winner of the U.S. presidential election. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Twitter is now calling the election for Joe Biden on Donald Trump's own tweets. Now, Twitter does tell us it's simply an update to its existing label designed to reflect the latest information. Now, there has been a staggering difference between this label and Twitter's previous one, which simply did read out, 
Multiple sources call this election differently. That obviously is out of the question now. And that the Electoral College has voted that President-elect Joe Biden is the next president of the United States. Now, this kind of keeps Trump from repeatedly tweeting, I won, doubtful. But I wouldn't be surprised if his tweets got a little bit more creative if he vents more on Twitter. Now, we do know that Twitter and a lot of social media platforms have been fighting misinformation when it does come to the U.S. president election. And uh, Twitter is one of those main uh, main counterparts when it was coming to misinformation. They even uh, removed the retweet feature on their tweets because they didn't want people just to retweet things without reading it. And it kind of did make uh, Twitter users go to the quote retweet button, which did prompt a different type of, uh, of, of feature what made that made you read the tweet twice. Now, ever since the president election has been called off, I mean, not called off, that Joe Biden was the winner, is the winner. Uh, they did bring that retweet button back and uh, they're still combating misinformation because, again, this year has been crazy with the misinformation from coronavirus all the way to the U.S. president election. So uh, misinformation is very harmful, as we can see. And number two, unfortunately, the U.S. president currently is uh, spreading misinformation and Twitter is tackling that problem. Let me know your guys' thoughts. 4215 Duar Slot or on our Instagram at Pulse95 Radio. We're going to be taking a short break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking about a massive fraud operation that stole millions and millions of dollars from online bank accounts. And I'm going to be telling you guys how to protect yourself from such fraud. Keep Pulse95 locked because I'm going to be right back. Take this out. Take this out. A massive fraud operation has stole millions and millions of dollars from online bank accounts. And the crooks, the crooks used emulators to mimic the phones of more than 16,000 customers whose mobile bank accounts had been compromised. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I love talking about these type of stories. I love talking about hacking. And I, even though I do not obviously condone these actions, but it just interests me so much about how these hackers can get these type of information. And I will be teaching you guys or telling you guys how to protect yourselves from such attacks. Now, researchers from IBM say they have uncovered a massive fraud operation that used a network of mobile device emulators. Now, for those who do not know what an emulator is, it basically kind of simulates uh, stimulates uh, a mobile phone. And it's not a mobile phone. It's on your computer that uh, kind of gives off the code that it is a mobile phone, but it's not. Now, they used it to drain millions of dollars from online bank accounts in just a matter of a couple of days. Now, the scale of the operation was unlike anything the researchers have seen before. In one case, crooks even used about 20 emulators to mimic more than 16,000 phones belonging to customers whose mobile bank accounts had been compromised. And in a separate case, a single emulator was able to spoof more than 8,000 100 devices now the thieves did enter usernames and passwords into banking apps that run on the emulators and did initiate a fraudulent money order that kind of took funds out of the compromised accounts now emulators are used by legitimate developers and researchers to test how apps run on a variety of different mobile devices but unfortunately they did use this type of emulator for fraudulent purposes and malicious intent now to bypass protection banks most most time they use uh SMSs, but what they could do, these hackers, is that they spoofed GPS locations on the device that was known to use, and the device IDs were likely obtained from the holder's hacked devices. Although, in some cases, the fraudsters gave the appearance that they were customers who were accessing their account from new phones, and the attacker, attackers were also able to bypass multi factor authentication by accessing SMS messages. So obviously, ladies and gentlemen, we're saying that this was a big, big, big deal because these hackers, they're not just your run up normal hacker. They were getting access to SMS messages from your phone. That's number one. And number two, they were using GPS spoofing. Now GPS spoofing, I, I believe is not that hard to do. With a VPN, you could probably do anything. But uh, I mean, it's just a shame to see millions and millions of dollars taken from innocent customers' accounts uh, caused by these hackers. Now, I do believe that the banks did refund them or gave them a type of security or safety because I do think that the bank is held accountable. But what I know is that some, some are saying that maybe the customers are at fault. They may have clicked on a phishing link or not. But uh, 
it's kind of, it, it does raise the usual security advice about using strong passwords and learning how to spot phishing scams. Now, for those who don't know what a phishing scam is, well, basically, let's say, for example, you get an email from Hany.com and you use Hany.com all the time, but uh, at, you, you, you get an email saying that, hey, your username or password needs to be updated, all right? And you click on it, you enter your username and password, and it just nothing happens. Well, you have to make sure that the link, the URL that's being sent to you is uh, is the same thing that you, the, the normal website you go on to. Because the thing is that these phishing links with spoof links and you click a link thinking it's handy.com, the usual handy.com you go to, but there's two Y's at the end of Hany. You see what I'm saying? Now, I mean, a lot of people were saying that a lot of uh, were, a lot of them were clicking these phishing links and downloading malware and just making it really, really easy for these hackers. And time and time again, Omni and I were talking uh, to you guys about how to protect yourself from these type of phishing scams and, and and hacks in general. Number one, don't click any link that you don't know who it is. Number two, if you do click the link, don't reply, delete the email. Try not to interact with the email at all. I get phishing links all the time, but thankfully I can differentiate from an actual link and a phishing link. But some people are not that tech savvy and they don't know much about it. Now, the banks do say that uh, it's kind of a problem that the problem or the mistake does come from the user who is the customer. And uh, what I, I do believe, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, I mean, I think both should be held accountable at the same time. Uh, it, it does suck. Uh, I want to know your guys' thoughts, though. 4215 or on our Instagram, at Pulse95Radio. Do you think that the, the bank should be held accountable for these hacks, or should the customers uh, be held accountable, and should they get their money back? Let me know your guys' thoughts, 4215 And always remember, ladies and gentlemen, keep your information safe. Don't give your username, your password to anyone. These simple, these simple credentials could cost you a lot of money. Pulse95. All around. What's worth a click and download? What's worth a click and download? That is a question for today, as I do have an app for you guys. Now, today we're going to be talking about games and not any other type of games. We're talking about games for kids, and it did get an award for the kids' best game on Android for 2020. Now, we do know there are a lot of games for children out there, so it can be hard to sit through them and find the best free Android games for kids, especially when you're not a kid and you're looking for something for your children. But I have the answer for you guys. It is Connect Words, and it is the best game that is not just entertaining, but it is educational as well. And even better, it is completely free. Now, this is a game that will build the skills, like enhancing vocabulary, even increase IQ and focus. Now, this game is suitable for all children aged 5 all the way to 15 because there is no violence or other inappropriate content to worry about. Even teenagers and adults can play it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these type of apps are apps that I do love, and I'll tell you why. Because it's very important for kids, because we do know kids use their iPad or whatever type of gadget they're using all the time, and they do play games. So why not give them a type of game that number one is educational and number two will raise their IQ, raise their vocabulary and increase focus. And uh, I'm just saying, ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for free games for kids to play on a smartphone or tablet that you can leave your kids to play alone or even you can join them and have fun yourself, then all you have to do is install the Connect Words game app. It is called Connect Words game app. It is on the Android only and is the best game for 2020. Now, I know a lot of us, we play games on our phone. I do play games on my phone. I like to play games that kind of test my knowledge a little bit. I'm talking about games that you have to connect words or some puzzles or even Sudoku, even though I'm bad at it. But I want to know your guys' thoughts, 4215, thoughts, or on our Instagram, at Pulse95Radio. Now, I did ask, about, I did talk about uh, the best Android game in 2020, but I want to ask you guys, the listeners and the viewers on YouTube, whether or not, uh, not whether or not, <laughs> what games do you like to play on your phone? Text in 4215, thoughts, and if there's a game that goes well both on Android and iOS, our text lines are open. We're going to be taking a short break, ladies and gentlemen. But when we come back, we're going to be talking about Microsoft Office. You're probably wondering, Kenny, why are we talking about Microsoft Office? Well, I do some I do have some really good news for 2021. This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Omnia Saleh and Hany Balkis. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I have good news for you, and it is going to be coming in 2021. Now, I am talking about Microsoft Office. Now, you're probably wondering, honey, why do I care about Microsoft Office? Well, now we do know that when you use Microsoft Office, either you have a license for it, so you've paid, I think it's around 300 dirhams for Microsoft Office, or you opt for a subscription-based service, and you'll pay around, I do believe it's around 30 to 40 dirhams. Well, that is no longer the issue because a new version of Microsoft Office without a subscription will launch in 2021. Now, we do know that subscriptions may be ideal for certain services, such as Netflix with this constant, constant flow of new content, but for a suite of tools like Microsoft Office, well, I just don't see that paying every month and it doesn't kind of suit everyone, especially if all you want to do is access Word or even Excel spreadsheets. But thankfully, a new license edition of the suite will arrive next year. Now, Microsoft does clearly push an Office subscription as the best way to access its always up-to-date up suite of tools and services, while those who just want to buy a copy outright and use it for years to come are still using Office 2019. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, there will be a Microsoft Office and it will be released on Windows and Mac in the second half of 2021. So I do believe the second half of 2021 is after, uh, I do believe June. So, but no, so far there is no details regarding the name, price or availability of this new version, but they do suspect it may end up being called Office 2022. And it does also seem likely that we'll see the typical home and business retail editions again. Now, Microsoft has also previously offered enterprise and education editions for a lower and set price, it depends on which what you're opting for. But it will be interesting to see and how the pandemic and huge increase in remote learning impacts the license options. As the release isn't planned until the second half of 2021, I doubt we'll hear much more in the way of details about it until early or even late next year. Now, we do always see Microsoft coming out and trying to cater, uh, especially during the pandemic. We've seen a lot with Microsoft Teams, and they have they have a couple of uh, VoIP platforms to use to call and connect with businesses and families. And we're seeing Microsoft catering during the pandemic, and we're, we're seeing an increase in use in computers, tablets, phones, technology in general in the beginning of 2021 because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's good to see that Microsoft is saying, hey, listen, not everyone wants to pay a fee every month because, again, Simp uh, it isn't a, a huge price, 30 dirhams, but 30 times 12 and then you're paying it for a set amount of years. It does add up. Pennies do add up. So everyone needs to count their pennies. And we do know, unfortunately, a lot of, pe a lot of people have lost their jobs because of COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of people are not getting their full salary because of the pandemic. A lot of people are going through a tough time. And I do hope that these times will surpass soon with the vaccine coming out and, 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 and things like that. But I do hope that you're, 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 you're positive about this. Be positive about the pandemic. I know it, it's a negative uh, time right now, but we always have to remember that it is a phase and it will pass, inshallah. But, ladies and gentlemen, this does conclude future talk. Yes, indeed. I am going to be jumping in the spaceship and going all the way to space. But I want to know your guys' thoughts before I end the show. 4215 thoughts or on our Instagram at Pulse95Radio. What did you think about the story today? And what is your favorite story? But, of course, ladies and gentlemen, we won't leave you empty-handed because the Dream Team... Michaela, Michaela Atiyah and Aisha Al-Mazmi will be hosting the afternoon karak from 4 to 5. Then after that, you do have Yellow Home from 5 to 8 with Big House and Anna Schofield. But my time is done. I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place, only here on Pulse95. Stay safe. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, do your best to be safe. If you liked this episode of Future Talk, drop a like and subscribe. Pulse95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.